PPA Heidi Allen here with an exclusive video story for all of the PPA members. So today I want to tell you a very personal story about where we gain our knowledge, where we gain our lessons. Because the majority of my life growing up, I honestly thought, or at least I was told, I was taught that all of our lessons and the real knowledge that we gain in our life comes from books, comes from teachers, comes from people that were older and wiser than me. So, you know, like I said, we're talking teachers, we're talking parents, we're talking grandparents, and anyone that is in any sort of professional job, this is where we gain most of our knowledge from. Now, I was also told that we definitely get them from some of our experiences, but the majority of it comes from these other places I just talked about. See, here's the thing though. As I grew up, I started to realize that in actual fact, a lot of our lessons come from where we least expect them. And one particular lesson that I want to tell you about actually came to me from my son when he was five years old. So my son was five and this is a time where, you know, bedtime routine is a big deal. So, you know, with him, he was five. I was pretty strict on a lot of the rules raising Michael. I was so young at the time. So the only thing that I fell back on as a parent were the things that I read and had learned about how to raise a child. So bedtime routine, like I said, was pretty strict. So eight o'clock, I said to him, Michael, please hand over your Game Boy. It's time for you to go to bed. And of course he started whining quite a bit and you know telling me mommy mommy no 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 i want to show you my pokemon characters you see he'd gotten this game boy from christmas um the last year and he'd become quite obsessed with it um i on the other hand was not um i really could care less about video games and yet every single night he would always go on and on and on about he wanted to show me his games he wanted to show me his pokemon characters because that's who he was obsessed with so i you know very sternly told him no it's bedtime hand over the game boy let's go so i got him into his room you know a couple stories all the teddy bears a tired little boy tucked in and i finally decided it was time for me to put my feet up and just have a glass of wine and watch some TV. Now at the time, I lived in one of those raised bungalows. So on the main floor portion of the raised bungalow were the bedrooms, the living room, the kitchen, and the bathroom. And then the downstairs part, it had a family room and another bedroom. So I wandered downstairs and I put my feet up and I started to channel surf. And as I'm doing this, all of a sudden upstairs, I can hear little footsteps running around. And I was like, he's up is Michael up so I ran upstairs thinking you know maybe he's gone to the bathroom maybe he wants to drink water whatever it is so I checked the bathroom no Michael I checked kitchen no Michael and as I started to walk past my bedroom I could hear like what sounded like the television was on so I just you know kind of opened the door very slowly and I found my five-year-old son with his hand behind his head just casually watching television. So of course I'm like, Michael, what are you doing up? Get back to bed. You are not supposed to be up. Bedtime is bedtime. That's it. I said to him tomorrow, you are going to bed 15 minutes earlier. Now off you go. Well, the punishment seemed to work because I didn't hear from him for the rest of the night. So the next night, the same routine, you know, I said, come on, Michael, it's bedtime. He started whining again. Please, mommy, you still haven't looked at my Game Boy. I want you to see my Pokemon characters. When are you ever going to do that? You never have time to do that. He started going on at me. And I said, Michael, it is bedtime. You know that you have to go to bed 15 minutes earlier because of what happened last night. Now hand it over, I said to him. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, my son at this point then did his best impersonation of a dead man walking that I had ever seen. Seriously, it was Oscar worthy. So he just kind of stomped off to bed. I tried not to giggle because of course I'm trying to be very strict and rules are rules and they're not to be broken. So I tucked Michael in, I headed downstairs hoping this that was the end of that because he'd already been punished for it. I'm not lying to you when I say not five minutes went by and I heard him running around upstairs again. So I 
went upstairs. Again, I found him in my bedroom watching television. I said, that's it. You're going to bed 30 minutes earlier tomorrow night. Get back to bed. So the third night, we're going through the routine. It is now 7.30 at night on the dot. I said, that's it, let's go to bed. This is your punishment. You know, you better not be getting up again. You know, I went through the whole thing with him. Into bed he goes. Of course, he whined again that I was not looking at his Game Boy or his Pokemon. So I said to him, I'm like, I'm telling you right now, Michael, if you get up, you are going to bed an hour earlier tomorrow. So I felt pretty confident in my punishment. So I headed back downstairs again. I'm not, I like barely sat down and I heard him up again. And now I was fuming. I was fuming that this child was up again. I stormed upstairs. I burst into the bedroom. I said, Michael James, what do you think you are doing? And he said, mommy, I'm gonna tell you something. You keep punishing me with things that I don't really care about. And I'm not going to listen to you unless you actually punish me with something that I care about. And I said, are you kidding me with this? Like, are you kidding me? So I said, okay, fine. What should I punish you with then? He said, well, mom, if you would punish me by taking away my Game Boy, I will never get up again, because I love my Game Boy. So I stood there, pretty shocked. I couldn't believe what had come out of his mouth. First of all, I couldn't get over his confidence, how insightful he was. And, and I was like, really? So I said to him, fine, that's it. Tomorrow, no Game Boy for the whole day. And he said to me, see now, I'm not gonna get up. And he scurried off to bed. I probably stood there for about five minutes because I couldn't believe what had just happened. First of all, I was thinking, who is parenting who here? And once the shock finally wore off as to what had just happened, I actually realized what this was. And it was a pretty powerful lesson that this kid had just shown me. You see, here's the thing. As human beings, we all want to be acknowledged, appreciated, seen, and heard. And Michael, for days, had been telling me what his love was, what his interest was. He was doing everything possible to get me to listen and to notice him and to acknowledge him and what was important to him. And I didn't see it at all. See. As human beings, when we are not acknowledged, seen, or heard, what happens is we are gonna act out physically or verbally. For some, that's disobeying rules. For others, it's acting out in anger. Sometimes it, it, it's even using things like food or alcohol because we haven't been seen. And so Michael had been acting out and been so disobedient because he was just trying to get my attention and for me to acknowledge and see him. So for me, this was one of the biggest lessons that I'd ever learned about human beings. And guys, I learned it from my five-year-old son. So the next morning when Michael got up, I grabbed his Game Boy and I put it in front of him and he was a little shocked by my action. And, you know, said to me, mommy, like I'm, I'm supposed to be grounded from that for the whole day. So I was super proud that he was so honest um, in that moment. But I, I said to him, I said, listen, Michael, if you promise me that you will not get up again, I promise I will sit with you right now and you can show me all your Pokemon characters. And he promised and pledged that he would not get up that night. And then for the next 30 minutes, we just sat there and he showed me every character and every screen and everything that meant so much to him. It's actually one of my most favorite memories. So we have a choice every single day. People are all around us and we're interacting with them constantly. And all we have to do is stop. Sometimes we have to step back from all the rules and our agendas and everything that we're doing. And we just have to listen. We have to acknowledge each other. And 
for me, I promised Michael after that day that I would always, I would always take time to listen and make sure that I was there for him. Even if I didn't understand half the stuff he was talking about, especially when it came to video games. You see, most of his childhood, he was always obsessed with video games and this went right into his adulthood. My son now is 22 years old and he actually um, just graduated with honors <laughs> from video game development. So you see, we just never know in life, but we have to make sure that we're all there for each other. I'm super proud of what Michael has accomplished, but what I'm the most proud of is that I stepped back that day when he was five years old and I didn't let my ego or pride get in the way, but I realized the important message that my son had given me, the important lesson that I was to learn that day. And I really hope all of you do the same. Thank you.